Well, in this episode, we're going to take a look at the uh, new and improved AC75. Uh, this box had a motor sent to us from HPVS at one time. Uh, we hold on to a few of them once in a while just to use for other things. And this one, it actually sent uh, the AC75 back to them for repair and improvements, upgrading, and, and then it made it back. So three trips on this box. It uh, doesn't look too bad. But let's, uh, let's open her up. See what she looks like. So, these are a little bit heavier than the AC50 and AC51, and so I'm not going to try to manhandle it at all. We're going to use uh, hydraulic power. We're going to use our cherry picker here to lift this thing out of the box and carry it over to the workbench. Any job's easier if you got the right tools. So, it's just a matter if I can get the rope underneath this thing. Ah, I was afraid of that. Ugh. Yeah. This thing has sat. It's in pieces that this box wasn't meant for this motor. So, it, uh, it doesn't have the clearance. Let's see if we can shift the weight a little bit and get this thing to come out. So by rolling on its side, got the weight off the bottom, allowed me to get the rope around it. Normally there's enough clearance on these things, and you can get the rope around it. Not this time, in fact, just the rope by itself. I'm going to try to grab it about center. I think I'm off center a little bit. Hard to tell. How are we doing on camera there? Try to keep it in the frame. Okay. Well, because of the uh, connections there, it can't slide that way anymore. So we'll let it come out. It's twirling for you there so you can see the whole thing. Now, what I want you to notice, let me zoom in a little bit here, is There was originally, if you look at the earlier video, there was the encoder that was external. And that has been removed. And it is now an internal encoder that's built into the bearing. And this has a different, um, 
different bearing in it than it had before. And, uh, and so previously, this uh, was a different setup. And so So now it has a different uh, set of the thrust being on this front bearing, which was held in place by these three screws and, and some fingers. And so it couldn't take the extreme clutch pressure. It's been replaced with the thrust bearing on the rear. And so it's the rear plate that's now going to hold it, the end cap here. So it won't be able to go anywhere. So that's the improvements, improved uh, bearing design and, uh, and encoder that's internal now. So we're going to uh, reattach this. I want to use the rope to get it out of the box. And we're going to reattach this and, uh, and put it up on the workbench, but we're gonna we're gonna attach to the motor a little differently to do that. Lifting out of the box is one thing, but lifting up high, put it on the workbench, and move it that distance, I feel better with a different uh, different lift method. Although we use this rope hundreds of times. So let me go grab the rest of what we're going to use to do that. And, uh, and I'll be right back. So for lifting it into the workbench, I'm going over to the, uh, over to the workbench. We're just going to use a chain. There we go. Drop this down a little bit. Well, we're going to fly at low altitude until we get over to the workbench. Then we'll jack it up to the height. It's a hot one today, 105. And so it's probably 85 to 90 in the shop. So let's go over to the workbench. Grabbed our cradle. We use this same piece for the uh, floor jack, which we use for lifting up into certain vehicles like uh, Porsches and VWs. And we also use it on our workbench to cradle. So lift this up. We got too much stuff in the warehouse here. We're running out of room to easily maneuver. Place. This is the drive-in, so we're going to have it hang out over the edge here so that we can uh, install the adapter, all that. There she be. So now we'll strap her down to work with it so that it uh, doesn't move around as we're torquing on things and so forth. 
I have marks here so I know where this is centered between my anchor points and so forth. You can see we reuse parts a lot here. I like things that have multi-purpose. Okay, let me get this out of the way. This over. Anyway, the purpose of this, like I said, is to when you're torquing things on, you just don't want it to move around. You don't want to take a chance this thing coming off the workbench. It's like 165 pounds right now. And so that would do a number on your toe. So if you remember our previous videos, we uh, we recessed these holes better so that the, uh, the bolt head is now flush with the top. I get in the screen. Okay. Where before it stuck out a little bit. So now we have this much sticking through. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a mark and we're going to double check and make sure we have enough depth. These bolts were shortened when we installed this originally. So what we're going to do is we'll double check, and make sure they don't bottom out. Woohoo! Bottoms out right at our mark. So I think I'm going to shorten them a little bit more. Because that's where that bottoms out, right there. So. You don't want it bottoming out and you're trying to torque something and you find out that uh, that's not where it needs to be. So since we have such just a little bit to do, I'm going to use a grinder and uh, I think I'll just grind it down instead of cutting it with the hacksaw. I'll try one and see if that works. <laughs> Well, I've put a nut on here just so that uh, after I grind this, I can chase the threads with this and uh, make sure that we can use those threads. Well, hopefully that's enough. I'll measure. Take this nut off. Comes right off. It's going to be a little bit warm. Get that in. We'll grab it this end. Let's mark it this way. And we'll see if our mark shows through. about do it. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll use that as my guide for the others. Bring them all down to the same length. So no use boring you with that. 
I'll come back once I've got all four of them taken care of. Before I, I ground off the rest of my bolts, I wanted to go and check and make sure that when we drilled these holes, or recessed these holes, that they're all identical. Because if they weren't, that would affect the depth of that bolt. And so they are all identical. Uh, but I just wanted to confirm before I got grinding on things. I also like to take a file and just go around the end of the nut that I've cut. And what that does is it, it gets rid of any sharp edge that could cut you and it'll aid in starting the, uh, the bolt in the hole. So. clean it up a little bit. We're going to run the net up and down a few times, chase those threads, and it'll be good. So I like to do it enough times, you know, running this net up and down, to where you can do it with your finger nice and easy. And you know the threads are nice and clean. We're reusing these bolts. They had thread lock on them before, so we want to make sure they're nice and clean. So anyway, you can see it threads in nice and easy with just my fingers, and that's what we wanted. We just want to make sure that everything is sitting just the way it should. These didn't have to be flush, but we had lots of meat in order to do that, so we just ran them down flush. If you look at previous videos, you can see that we cleaned this up a lot and uh, so that we have a nice consistent edge and you'll see once we put the flywheel on there we'll have great clearance but with the new bearings should be no no issues anymore don't have to worry about this thing moving over time well we've got lots of videos showing installing the coupler and uh, heating it up on the hot plate and so forth. So we're not going to bother doing that again. Same way as I'm going to put the adapter on next. Won't bother filming that. Just added some Loctite to the set screw here. And Make sure it's nice and snug. So once the coupler's on, like I said, then we can put the adapter back on. Once the adapter's on, flywheel clutch, so forth. When I took this apart, I made a mark on these so I don't have to even think about where it goes. I know it goes just like this. There it goes. Once we get the flywheel on, we'll check, and make sure we have the correct magic number that they didn't change things in their upgrading of the uh, motor. Well, bad news. <laughs> that shaft isn't in the same place. It's further in because our coupler is further in, which drew the flywheel closer to this. And we already had tight clearance, but you're gonna see. I, I, I pulled the bolts out of it. I had bolts in it a moment ago. Um, but you can hear it rubbing. Bolts back in here. Put the bolts in, it won't turn. I mean, that's just two of them. So, we have a little bit of an issue. So, what we're going to have to do is, you know, we need to maintain 
this distance from here to here on the flywheel, this is a given. Right now, we don't have enough. So if we machine something off the back side of this, and we've had to do that before just from ordering from these people they didn't have it correct. But in this case, motor change, we lost our, our standard. So not pointing the finger at the same place this time. But anyway, so the, the easiest thing to do, I think, and easy that means <laughs> we're going to have to send it out and have them do it. And that will put us back into the proper uh, clearance here. But it means it's going to go back out again and wait for somebody else. And I don't know how quickly the machine shop will get to it for me. So it just seems like there's always something. And in this case, this particular setup uh, has always been more work than it should be. So after I, you know, put the adapter on, you didn't see me, but put Loctite on all the bolts, torque them all down, undo all that again, clean all those threads again, take the adapter in, have it machined, back to back to you know not square one but we definitely took a few steps back so anyway so much for that I was hoping to get this thing in the vehicle today but that's not gonna happen so well we did get some other parts in today besides the motor so We've got some other projects, and one of them is uh, one that we're filming, so we can hopefully put something together and have something to offer you guys uh, at the end of the week.